morning, I'm Stacey J and this is my studio and welcome to my sit down Sundays with Stacey J. Welcome back if you watch my sit down Sundays before, it's where I prattle along about things I think. And welcome back, did I say welcome? Welcome back if you've seen me before and welcome if you're new to this channel and new to my sit down Sundays. My sit down Sundays are probably less about how to or what I've, more about whys um, on clothing bodies and things like that. Um, quick background, I learned to sew for four years, two nights a week, um, 33 years ago, makes me 34 this year. Um, so I did Women's Wear 1 and 2 at TAFE and did the women's sewing and production and <clears throat> it was good, it was fun. I enjoyed it. I did that while I was in the military. So I guess I'm not 34 this year. Maybe a little bit older. Just a smidge. So during that time I learned to sew. It was about um, making stuff fit me. And the fun, I had so much fun. I made the biggest shorts in the world for my then, when I started the course, fiance um, in fluoro green, like shorts that were like so big on him. It was hilarious, but <clears throat> I've come a long way. I've come my ways since then. And it wasn't until about 10 years ago, I started working with the military here in New Zealand. Um, I was in the military in Australia as well. But here in the military here, I was the tailoress for the entire Wellington region. And that's region, region. Just throw a couple of letters in there for fun. And that's where I learnt a lot about um, our body types um, and all that sort of stuff. And if you go back to um, some of my original sit down Sundays, I kind of go through the process of what I learnt and how different it can be when you are the body you are so now i'm talking about different things like style versus ease and how there is a certain amount of style to every garment every garment is different as well of course um and when you should if you buy off the rack you should buy, buy ready to wear off the rack whichever off the peg all different ways and terminologies of purchasing something that is in a shop and already made. I have a um, so I'm just getting rid of text so it's not I'm not you know hindering my brains because my brains only work at a certain speed and it's usually um backwards. So um so say so this uh Ease versus style. Every bit of every bit of clothing has an ease on it, um, and as the garment gets further away from your body, the ease gets larger to fit your body. So, if you went to a shop and you bought off the peg, you would be buying, uh, say, for a large, you'd be buying a large in everything, and it should, by rights, be able to slot on top of each other. So you. Yeah, like your singlet or your or your um, camisole and then you have your shirt or your t-shirt then your shirt should be able to go over your t-shirt then your blazer should be able to go over your um over your um shirt and then your coat should be able to fit over side you, over your blazer so that's what ease comes into it style is different to ease so if you're meant to have a very super flouncy dress and the flounciness is 20 inches bigger than your hips are, then that's actually style. It's not ease. So um, that's how it's meant to fit on the body size of your measurements to the pattern because that's what the designer has set in their mind of what it should look like on you. So, yeah. And... As for that, your body circumferences 
I make it sound like we need to chop a tree down and count the rings. Your body circumferences and your bust, your waist and your hips are still set on target with how it was set in past history. So in past history, your bust is smaller than your hips. That's how you're meant to be. It's not how I am. Okay, so my bust is way larger than my hips. So I hold, I've got a very long torso. Sorry, I don't have a long torso. I've got a short body, but from my crutch to my waist, it's very long. So it makes me having to add things if it has a crutch to it. My legs are long. They're not very long. But they're long. So in saying that, pause, regroup. I've been talking about things like that. And colour. Colour is important to lift us to where we want to be. Now if I wore, I'm just going to grab my shoes because the colour of my shoes is what I'd never wear on my face. If I wore that close to my face I'd look like I'd merge into a morphed into a blob of human flesh not so good so yeah so color is important it's inviting or it's non-inviting you know you think about what you wear um, even with your your RBF a lot of what you wear on your person can detract or, or attract human contact. Hmm. If you don't know what R RBF is, Google it. <laughs> I'm not going to say it online. Um, so, yeah, so colour is important too, and I've gone on that. I I spoke mostly about red and how red is a powerful, um, demanding colour. Um, it is... It, can lift a lot of humans up but of course reds are made with orange or blue um, as their basis um, the bluer it is the more it can be good for somebody or the oranger it is the less good it can be for some oranges it is yeah less it can be for somebody so that's another another look at at it all so today i'm going to talk to you about Jackets versus, uh, suits versus blazers. Okay, or oh, blazers versus suits. What are the differences? Now, I'm going to read from my book because I don't remember what I had for dinner last night, so I can't, you know, read verbatim and study this. Now, there's a blazer and a jacket. Okay, looks very similar. Okay, how to tell the difference between a suit and a blazer. Most people wouldn't be able to distinguish the difference between a suit jacket and a blazer, but there are some key contrasts. What is a suit jacket? A suit jacket is formal wear with matching pants. It is often produced in a fine in finer materials such as cotton, linen. Let's see, this is where dyslexia comes in. It says worsted, but it's worsted. <laughs> gotta love it gotta love it the jack suit jacket um, has a closer fit than a blazer and is designed to be worn only with a dress shirt underneath it okay so that's something that i've just mentioned before about versus ease what is a blazer the more casual than a suit jacket a traditional blazer is commonly made of wool and is often features contrast coloured piping or brass buttons. Modern blazers, on the other hand, look exactly like suit jackets, but are usually have a generous fit. To allow them to be worn over bulky garments, such as sweatshirts, or sweaters, not sweatshirts, and they do not come with matching pants. Okay, right there, it's telling you that the cut between the blazer and the suit, the suit is only meant to be worn over a shirt, which is a thinner cotton, Versus having a cardi or a sweater underneath, you know, a nice little v-neck wool sweater underneath. Obviously, mostly men we're talking about for this. 
Can a suit jacket be worn as a blazer? As long as you wear it with non-matching pants, just keep in mind that because the suit jacket is part of a set, if you wash it and wear only the jacket regularly, you'll fade the fabric and will no longer have matching pants. Right, this is something huge that I had when I was in the military, was that when I joined the military in Australia, they had um, your service dress. Okay, service dress is, was the one that you wore on parades. It was the one you wore for Anzac. It was the one that you showed up in for stuff, you know. Um, so we called it our um, SDs, our service dress. So our service dress was cut in the same cloth. Now, being a bulkier girl on the top and less bulky in the bottom, I put on my jacket and my skirt fell off because it was the same size and I wasn't the same size. So I had to get mine made, especially. They couldn't find another skirt that fitted me because it was no longer cut from the same cloth. Because when you stand on parade, you are to look uniformed in the same colour. Now, as it said, nowadays that blazers are cut similar fabrics um, and no longer have the piping or the brass. You know, it looks just like a suit jacket. It's because it is cheaper to produce it that way. So cheaper means not as classic and it doesn't hold the traditions that it used to hold. Going forward to the military, um, they no longer cut the jacket and the pants in the same cloth because they were finding they had to do a lot of um, special measures and that's what I want, a special measure. Special measure, more money, more money, less financial whatever. Okay, so when I was a tailoress and we had to get the blazers, new um, ST jackets for the military, I'd always make them go and buy a brand new pair of pants to go with it. And of course, not being a set, they were no longer as expensive um, for the company paying for it. But I would see a lot of the old school boys and girls would have their ST jacket and skirt or pants sitting in the wardrobe and that would be it. You wouldn't touch it until Anzac Day or a parade or something of importance. But of course the newbies that came through would wear the same pants over and over and over again because they had to wear the pants but not the jackets, that the pants would fade. And when they stood on a parade with their jacket, it looked shocking. So that's where the outcome comes into it with wearing your jacket as a blazer and not having a separate blazer. Now, I've had a lot of clients come to me, a lot of male clients, and oh, Stacey, um, this has happened to my pants, well, that's happened to my pants, and this matches my jacket, blah, blah, blah. What can I do? I don't want to throw the suit out, and the pants aren't rendered any good. Um... And I've just said, keep the jacket and wear it as a blazer. Um, which they like, I said, it'll dress up a t-shirt um, and a pair of jeans. So do that. So they've kept the jacket. But again, it's a suit jacket. And normally the reason they can't wear it anymore is because they put on weight or lost a, a substantial amount of weight. And yeah, so they've done it that way. Um so that's the quick difference between the two. Let me get back to reading. I never liked reading out loud when I was um, at school. Okay, the suit buttoning etiquette exists because King Edward the Seventh had a very large belly. <laughs> oh, Mr. Christopher. Okay, if you're a man with formal occasion to go to and not quite enough to just throw on any suit and head out the door. It's not quite enough to just throw on any suit and head out the door. Pay attention and you'll notice some gentlemen will undo their suit jackets when sitting and some will not. It is part of men's wear etiquette and a rule varying due to the types of jacket and the wearer's actions. We have King Edward VII to thank for that. Quickie with thank you for that. 
these quirky dress, dressing rules. Oh, let me say that line again. I'm so sorry. We have King Edward VII to thank for those these quirky dressing rules. During the early 1900s, the king had trouble buttoning the last button of his waistcoat due to a rather round belly. To keep from offending the royal leaders, he, his followers also left the last button undone. As an influence in, of Britain globally at the time was so strong, the trend spread across to the other parts of the world too. Meanwhile, lounge suits in the early 20th century were relatively casual and gentlemen started to replace traditional riding coats with lounge coats. When riding on horseback, people found that unfastening the last button can control the jacket drape properly without puckering. Therefore, unfastening the jacket button while sitting is also a practical et etiquette. Whew. So, what are the differences? different button styles of jackets. Okay, one button, two button, three button, four, five button, six button, seven button, more. Okay, so there's the little. I see mostly two buttons. I think my kids' school blazers have two buttons. Of course, they can wear jumpers under it because it's a blazer. Good to tell you a funny story, if I remember, of course, at the end of this. One button suit. Keep buttoned up when standing and unfastened when sitting. Two button suit. Top button remains unbut uh, remains buttoned when standing, unfastened when sitting. And always keep the last button undone. So basically, when you're standing, you have one button done for the one and two. Three button suit. When standing, it's optional to fasten the top button. Always fasten the second button and leave the last button undone. I don't know why we have the last button. Unbutton every button when sitting. So the top button's always fastened on the th three buttons and the second one always fastened as well until you sit down, right? And then you unbutton all of them. So when you're sitting, unbutton all your buttons. Double-breasted suits. Now, I think a gentleman looks exquisite in a, um, a double-breasted. Fasten every button except the last button next to the opening of the jacket. So it comes down in the two panels. And say it's opening this side. This button here is undone. The king had a little bit of sway, didn't he? Regardless of whether you're sitting or standing, keep the suit buttoned until you take the jacket off. Double-breasted men won't wear them. Waistcoat. Always unbutton the last button. Love a good waistcoat. Love waistcoats. Now, this is something that's important. I went to my Mr. Christopher's nephew's wedding, and I'm sitting there. Did I fix anything on their jacket? I might have done something to the back. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. I did Jeffrey's. <laughs> when they were standing there, the groomsmen, they were standing there, and one went, oh, my gosh, I split my back in my jacket. And I sort of went up and said, no, it's not meant to be done up. So me, trusty, had stuff I unpicked so that their back of their jackets could be unflapped. <laughs> so this goes into that. Why are there white stitches on my suit? It sounds like I'm reading Dr. Seuss. Isn't it the autonomy of luxury to have a bespoke suit created and a custom fit for your every need? So why do some suits have white stitches left on the garment? After all that expense, did the tailor forget to finish the job properly? The reason is, in fact, the opposite. This is why I have to tell people. I have suits coming to me after years of wearing, years of wearing. So do you want me to split your pockets? There's pockets. I didn't think they were pockets. Oh, dear. The white stitches are called base stitches. And we should know that. During the fitting and construction, these base st stitches are used to temporarily secure s sections of the suit to ensure any loose parts, such as lapels and vents, won't get caught on something during the packaging and transportation. They are also sometimes used as a sign of the suit having been handmade using fine craftsmanship, showing off the fact that the suit 
is not mass produced, a production produced. Still, it does not mean that you should walk around with those stitches and marks on display. Remove them or you might risk looking like a men's wear amateur. I have had suits come to me with the label on the cuff. And I've had to explain to them that's just, that's, we've got to get rid of that, you know. And these are mass produced garments, but the high end of mass produced garments. What are the commonal, com commonal? What are the common removable tailing elements? The pick stitching on the vents or lapel notches. Keep the pick stitching are usually white crosses on the lapel and vents that keep the garment neat and wrinkled free. So if you imagine that the flap at the back or the vent and it gets caught folded up, then it sort of gets into its a natural fold of folding up. So with it, with the big cross, and that's what the boy popped at the wedding and said, no, it's not meant to be there. The brand tag on the sleeve. Used by the production company or shop owners to identify a suit. The tag is stitched into the suit cuff and can be removed before worn. Sewed up pockets. This just does have me in hysterics. <laughs> I'm so excited to have a pocket. These are used to ensure the pockets sit neatly and stay clean. If the flap, uh, if there's a flap to cover it up, you want to keep these things perfectly neat. It's okay to leave it there. No, it's not. You need pockets. There you go. So I've got quite a lot about um, jackets, but I will leave it there. I just want to tell you what my my bookmark says. No clothes are ordinary. They have a story waiting to be told. Okay, so that's what we talked about is, is jackets and um, blazers and the difference. And, and women wear suits and we wear blazers as well. So when you go to make a blazer and it's giving you a bigger option to what you are for like ease sake, remember that ease has got to be bigger. It's got to have that room underneath it for a jumper if you're making a blazer or a cardi, you know. Um, so when you wear your blazer, you're going off to a friend's house and you've got your blazer and all, all to work and you take your blazer off when you get to work, you want to still be able to have your cardigan on or your jumper, depending on what you're wearing. Um, the boys have to wear their blazers on Tuesdays for mass. Um, that's their formal day. And again, it, it, it classes up something you're wearing. And even if you're not wearing a cardigan underneath it or something a little bulkier than a shirt, or a dress that's the style of a blazer is is to have that extra ease for another garment underneath it so when you look at your ease versus style think about what and why possibly is the reason for the ease like your tights are negative ease. If they actually had ease on you, they'd fall off you because they are a stretch fabric and usually a four-way stretch of tights. So you've got to have negative ease. It's got to fit smaller than you so it fits you and stays on you. Um, blazers need more ease than your body is. So possibly um, 10 centimetres to 15 centimetres around your chest to have that extra ability and your hips to have that e extra ability for you to be able to wear it comfortably with something underneath it. I have a coat that I know is um, due to um, a sneaky little bit of weight gain. When I say little, I mean big. Um, that I can't put anything under it anymore. But the coat is, has got inter interlining lining interfacing and it's a coat fabric so there's four layers that definitely keep me warm i will fit that i'll never give it away i will fit that coat again one day if not i cr i'll cry i'll just keep crying about it because i can't find the fabric anymore and it's just divine so that's what i want to talk about today another reinforcement on ease versus um style and there's just two garments right there that explain that 
and why that is such a thing. So when you are out there and you say, oh, well, that's super huge. I don't want my, you know, what is the garment? What, where does it lay on your body? Is it the first thing on your body? Is it the last thing on your body? Is it the middle in your body? So that's what you're going to look at as well. Yes, go by your body measurements. Think about the design. Think about what the designer has thought about. Think about where it lays on your body. Which which layer is it? Is it first, second, third, fourth, fifth? Like this jumper, I've got a tiny little cami on underneath it. And it's relatively comfortable on me. <laughs> when I say comfortable, I mean, you know, it's loose. But I don't mind because underneath it, I could have a couple of layers if I wanted to. And I know that I'm in my studio, although I have forgotten to turn my heaters on. Um, I will be warm enough in it today. I don't need to worry about it. And while I'm on the subject of what I'm wearing today, hang on, was I? Yeah, I was, wasn't I? I'm wearing the, um, I'm about to say Stylux, Stylux, top of tongues. Um, oh, have you all seen that there is a nice wee jacket, can't remember the name of it, currently 20% off, 30% off because of Bob's fifth birthday? Um, hopefully they actually cater for the other side of the world so by the time I get this out the other side of the world can see this jacket it's like a motorbike jacket it's quite cool I have it in my cart <laughs> haven't bought it anyway what was I saying I was saying what I'm wearing today I am wearing the sewing revival hummingbird but with my v-neck and it's in that cable knit yes I think I've actually mentioned how I keep wearing this it's like my go-to it's sitting on the blanket box upstairs in my bedroom but I'm going to show you what I'm wearing underneath I'm going to show you what I'm wearing at the bottom okay so at the bottom I'm wearing what I like to call and I design these my lao. okay I have got my daughter's shoes in here my daughter got a new phone yesterday because hers really super died in the butt she couldn't answer any phone calls so I have got on what we call my lounge pants oh coffee getting colder okay so the lounge pants are on an elastic waist okay they've got nice big pockets like this okay look at them pockets I can fit my phone in it i put i was about to put my phone in it can't because okay here's victoria's um old case that fits in my pocket gotta love that did i put a back pocket on no and what it is is i've altered a pair of pajama pants and they come down nice and wide and I made them to lounge around at night. And today I'm in the sewing room because I had friends come over yesterday um, about two o'clock and it stopped me making the clawed pants. So I have got to finish that and do a fitting of that today so I can get that online. But, but I mentioned to one of my um, subscribers and whom I also subscribe to, um, Erin sews her own clothes because Erin did a mix, uh, matching dress with her daughter. Her daughter is 18 months old. I think so. I think she's 18 months old. And um, Mabel's at the door going, let me in. I'll let her in. Then I'm going to get changed and I'm going to show you what I made matching with my daughter. But she had different fabric. Be back. Okay. These. <laughs> this is my onesie. I just turned it off. There's pockets. Now, the pockets I had to cut out and had to put them on different levels so they matched. <laughs> oh, so I took the pattern itself into um, into Lincraft, and knowing the girls from Lincraft, they um, said that I was allowed to buy the fabric 
only if I sent a photo of us doing a dance and um, yeah. So this is a 1970s pack pattern and um, I made it. I had a mum and a mat and a son matching on it, so I mean I had to. And Victoria actually had tamer. I love you s'mores. Um, had a tamer fabric. Hers was our uh, cream with um Aztec patterns on it. So yeah, so this is it. So when I want a snuggle bug, and I can put my little feet through the hole that I'm like in a little sack. Yes. No one said I was a grown up. No one. Anyway, so that's my fun for the day. So there you go, Erin. You said you wanted to see what they look like. That's what they look like. <laughs> Crazy. I know. Not that you could ever wear this where you are. You're in a little bit of a warm climate. Oh, I don't know what just fell down there. Anyway, people, I'll let you go. I'll let you go and enjoy your Sundays. Have a fantastic day. Stay well, stay warm, stay dry. Keep cool, keep on sewing. Hydrate and have no regrets. I'm going to get to my Claude pants now and reread because I was reading something when they showed up and um, after a couple, couple of three hours I don't go back into the studio because it was time to start cooking dinner. So that's why I'm sorry I didn't get a vlog out to you guys yesterday or last night in regards to the Claude pants. Anyway, take care, keep on sewing. Enjoy yourselves and I'll catch you next time.